Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode, I begin with a bit of a question mark here because what we've got on top here is one of our tugs plus a solar truss with ISS solar panels there, modified a little bit from the SSTU solar panels. I'll explain that in a little bit. But first, I can't seem to control this. Um, I, I just tried throttling up it doesn't work obviously we don't have a connection up here and that's peculiar because um, you know the tug itself has uh, an antenna as well as a controller and so does this upper stage I have an antenna and a controller as evidenced by that two gigabyte capacity and data and everything terminal you know all, all the usual business doesn't seem like there's any duplicates. If we take a look, and hibernation even, we've got this weird uh, Kerbalism Verbose remote tech startup. I don't have remote tech, so it shouldn't be starting it up. Uh, KOS, I don't know what it's doing. Boot file, well, we, we're not doing KOS for this one. I was planning to launch it myself. And this says ignore illegal joint. That's for the launch clamps. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Where's uh, where's my control? So, well, I'm gonna have to figure this out before we can launch this. But this is a peculiar one. Okay, I really don't understand this because we uh, we've used this tug. We've used this tug before. And it doesn't have any control apparently. I can't throttle up on it. It's got delta V and everything. It's we've used it to uh, independently of any other controller before. It's definitely got control information here and an antenna. But just on its own, nope, nothing. Uh, even if there wasn't any communication. It would still show, you know, the normal, well, we, we don't have communication indication, but it shows it as if it doesn't have a command, or, uh, command module. Um, all I've got is this Kerbalism remote tech startup thing, which is suspicious, but... Okay, so the situation is pretty peculiar. It still doesn't indicate anything up there about probe control, uh, but I've been able to throttle up after clearing input locks and even before I pressed clear input locks I was able to do SAS and RCS for some reason so I guess it's all right I was planning to control this manually um, because we're trying to make a rendezvous and everything I don't know whatever so retracting that we've got the big big fairing because uh, things are a little bit bulky hopefully I've got it balanced I put extra separatrons on here in a different place. Hopefully the booster will separate properly this time. We'll see. And with all that, uh, let's get started. So, I don't know. Uh, it's a zero meters per second there, but that's because I guess we haven't started the engine. Ignition. Oh, we can ignite. That's good. And launch. Was wondering whether staging would work. Um, but it's so weird. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And b before I wasn't even able to control anything, so I don't know what changed. I tried a few things. But I don't think any of those things made any difference. I did bring out another vessel onto the pad, but just the service module from the Lynx. God, this is interesting aerodynamic effects, huh? Um, the Link service module I brought out to the pad, and that worked. Uh, I, I think it still lost the engine. I don't know. Probably move those a little bit further down, I think. Yeah, so the Link service module worked. It had the little signal up there and everything. Okay, separation ignition, press 7. 
Okay, and double check the ISP, it's good, and we have cross feed, and fairing separation. So this is how I placed them. Uh, the tug is on this side, and then the solar truss beside it. We have to send a new tug because the other tug on the center point here has the round docking port, the one that Kerbals can pass through instead of just the propellant only one. And I wanted to use that point to, you know, bring this along. So that's why we are sending this other tug to handle the things that uh, need the propellant only docking port. Now, of course, it does have. Uh, around NASA docking system at one end and the propellant only docking port at the other end but um, those are mainly for its own docking if necessary uh, it's not the best thing to sort of tug something from those points those could technically have been left off In the rare case of the usage of a stack bike adapter here and of course we're just going to decouple using the docking ports. Uh, this truss has a NASA docking system at this end because that's currently what's on the on the inflatable hab at that end. The other trusses will s simply have the propellant only docking ports at both ends. Now, I had to modify the SSTU solar arrays because SSTU has its own special solar module and that wouldn't work with KSB Interstellar. KSB Interstellar expects the default solar module. So I just deleted the SSTU solar module and replaced it with the default solar module. <laughs> so, uh, so that uh, KSB Interstellar could work with those solar panels. I don't know why SSTU needs the special solar module. What what good does that do? I don't have any clue. Um, I didn't mean to shut down. Hmm. I, I didn't throw it all the way down, but okay. Good thing it has multiple ignitions. Okay, that's good enough for now. Now, now we'll see what goes on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen from here. Now, we're in a lower orbit, and but it's trying to catch up. We're also labeled debris, which is wrong. That's not right. Is that why I have this problem? I don't know. Maybe that's why. Rename vessel. I don't want to be debris. I'm a, I'm a probe. Maybe a station. Sure. No, that didn't make any difference. Something along those lines. But we'll have to make further adjustments. What is this 10,000 meters per second exactly? Um, guys, that's not in an hour, and it's not 10,000 meters per second. MacJab, what's going on? Okay, that MacJab's right. <laughs> it's this, this, this is wrong. I'm worried. I, uh, no, don't, don't, don't zoom. And and it shows the right thing here, eighty-four point five meters per second. It, the maneuver node indicator is just going along with wherever we're pointing. Some days, I have restarted the game since I started having this connection problem. I don't know what's up. Let's take a look at this. I'll, I'll clear input locks again. I don't know what that is. Um, console. There's a null ref thing with Jiggy again. I don't know what object it says I have a duplicate of. It, uh, Kerbalism has me here. That's good. I don't have duplicate computers anywhere. There's one here. Um, there's one in this part. There's, there shouldn't be any controller in the truss itself. Well, it's actually indicating how much delta V I need to complete the burn, uh, even though it doesn't know how much the burn is. That's extra weird. Now, well, this is not just... Uh,
well, will MechJeb know where the node is? Because this isn't just a prograde burn now. I think where it's going to make sense. I don't know why. Why is it an hour and ninety-five minutes? There's no. There isn't supposed to be a ninety-five minutes. I think after this burn, we'll just leave the tug to do the rest. I don't know if that'll help anything or not, but the tug had the same problem on the launch pad, so I don't have a whole lot of hope that's going to be solved once we ditch the stage. But why, when we've already used the tug before? Alright, we'll do the rest of the tug. You hold it steady. Decouple. Okay, this is this guy. Alright. Okay. That's not working quite right. Well, let's see if it orients right. Oh, now here's the problem. My H and N don't seem to work. None of my controls seem to work right now. Ha. Okay, well, man, that's still going on. Well, now it works, so... Clearing input locks worked there. I think my own little uh, propellant only docking port is the first suspect. Maybe there's something wrong with it that I'll have to take a look at. It is, I think, aside from that buy, cup, buy adapter, it's the only new part here. Well, no, that's not true. The solar panels as well. The truss, technically. So there's a bunch of parts we haven't used so far. But it's probably the more complicated one. It shouldn't have any command unit on it. Oh, this is not a great fit. Uh, it'll work. <laughs> right in there. All right. Good job. So, if we add this to the vessel, will it will this spread its horrible whatever is going on here or will the vessel that we have that works fine solve the problem? I don't know. Ah, well, we need to get this tug off. See now this has communication and everything. So, we're going to we're going to find out something or another. Okay. I want to undock that tug. Um, yeah. And this tug has power and everything. That's fine. It also has one of the propellant only docking ports. So, yeah. Maybe it's the solar panels then. Hmm. Maybe there's some other module or something about the solar mo uh, solar panels that I didn't understand. Because it did have that uh, that SSTU solar panel module before. Maybe I'll have to take a closer look at that. Obviously, I mean, it was too much to hope for that would be a simple replacement. Okay, we've redocked that tug. Well, this, this is having no problems right now. And once again, clear input locks. Okay, here we go. What's the situation going to be? Well, we have a connection, and it's still got that thing, so it's not got everything proper. Uh, what, what's the, the tug on its own, though, so has a problem, right? I mean, when I, uh, hold on, undock. Oh, wait. Mm, the ship doesn't seem to. 
this tug this tug seems to have a problem uh, let's see clear room put locks uh, back away back away okay so the tug has a problem this this is fine hmm as long as the tug is docked to the thing, we would have a problem. But we need this tug in order to help with the the other solar arrays. So we're going to have it hang out. I don't know what's wrong with it. The, the tug portion is the same. The only difference between this and the other tug is uh, it's got two of these propellant only docking ports and one of the the NASA docking systems whereas the other one has it all the other way around let's see cone on this side these docking ports were designed to only fit one way and that's to make sure the little fuel tubes lined up oh, oh, oh. Okay, well, it worked. Okay, so that's off the side. We still got that problem. Well, I mean, but then now it has solar panels, so I don't know if solar panels was the solution here. Anyway, let's extend these. And let's get into daylight. So each of these supplies should be, ignore that energy, f well actually that's right still, okay, um, 80 kilowatts. So theoretical supply including the solar panels on the tug and on the control module is 182 kilowatts right now. Okay, so that should do it. Let's make sure this is sun oriented. And RCS can be off. Again, there is a reaction wheel there. I'm not saying it's super powerful, but it's there. That should be good enough to hold it. And we are recharging. That's faster than I thought, right? Right, KSB Interstellar? You said 181 kilowatts. We're all very agreed. Ignore that power demand thing. I, I don't know what's going on with the power demand and net power and all, but um, I don't know why we're recharging at a rate of 300, though. Okay, well, anyway, it's here. <laughs> we've got we've got a solar truss. Let me, let me try some other things to try and fix the problem that I had. I'll just do some launch pad tests, and I'll come back to you if I've got anything. Otherwise... Probably I'll sign off for this one. This will be a short one. We'll see. Okay, I think I've solved it. Uh, it looks like, remember how it was marked debris before? And the tugs in the configuration file didn't have the vessel type specified. And it seems like if I have the vessel type specified as probe, it no longer has that issue. So we have full probe control now. And that's all I did on the tug configuration file. I just added vessel type equals probe and updated this one as well, even though this one was already deployed. Um, that's a little bit puzzling because once again, we've already used the tug before and I don't know why this one worked and then this one didn't, but let's just take a look. Well, no red stuff, so we'll go with it seems okay to me so maybe that was the problem i don't know but as long as it works it works i think i'm gonna launch the next two trusses i think uh, i mean we've got the tug ready to go and the tug will just grab the trusses and place them i might need a larger rocket for it though well uh no maybe not maybe not i think um uh, two of them will work on the Sajita. So let's do that and then we'll have all our trusses all in a row. Okay, so here we go. I added the vessel type to the upper stage of 
the Sajita rocket as well and hopefully that'll solve its problems and let us properly properly deorbit it we will see and I'll manually control this uh, we actually regained control of LoonSat 1 we've lost control of LoonScan 1 LoonScan 1's done its job so I'm not too bothered with that but anyway uh, we'll see how that all shapes up later why is it so anyway uh, retracting throttle this up SAS on and whoop make sure nothing's poking out of the fairing and ignition and launch it's a tight fit it's a tight fit with two of the trusses Oh, that it did the thing again. I don't think it hopped like it did that one time, but huh. the color is sort of a little bit weird today because of the clouds, I suppose. Yep, pretty big overcast I suppose. I should really be turning much faster. Okay, booster set. Okay, uh, it's just the stress. I don't think there's any real hope because it's, you know, the SRBs just come as one part. Because this thing is, that is multiple parts and we're decoupling it you know, close to Mach 1, well, basically at the highest dynamic pressure, max Q, it'll just rip apart. I guess the solution would be to hang on to the boosters for longer. We could just carry it with us for somewhat longer, but that's extra mass and it's a little bit annoying. We'll have to see. I want to get into a higher orbit initially. It's, uh, well, actually, it's half half, isn't it? I guess we could catch up to it. Yeah. We'll try and catch up to it. It's basically on the other side of the planet right now. Okay, separation and ignition. Let's try it again. And action group seven. Check that. Action group seven did all of its things. It did. Okay, fairing set. So, two trusses side by side, that's all it is. The tricky part is that the radiator had to be on the same side. If it could have been on this side, that would have been easier, but then we'd be grabbing the trusses from the wrong, it'd be all messed up, so. Anyway, it is the way it is. The trusses are lighter than the ISS trusses that the shuttle hauled up. That's, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, one, the, the ISS is actually much heavier than this will be, so that's one thing. It's just bigger overall and has all sorts of infrastructure. It has that rolly thing. Uh, anyway, uh, also uh, these only turn on, uh, on that axis. The ISS ones have another thing that turns them on a separate axis, so there's that business. And of course I tried to figure out the lightest possible that these trusses could be while bearing the expected thrust and turn rate and all that business. And it should be alright for that. The actual panel arrays are whatever realism overall set them to as far as the mass is concerned. Get underneath and catch up. It is on the opposite side of the planet. And ooh, the electric charge situation is a little bit dodgy. Oh, great. Well, yeah, we don't have the tugs batteries. So extend. Oh, oh, you hate to see that. Well, right now it just barely clears. <laughs> OK, well, yeah, we don't have much. If basically, we can only operate this on the daylight side at this rate. 
It was still a very peculiar effect that we got out of not having vessel type specified, huh? Does this make you wonder? Okay, okay, you can just rotate. You might wonder why I've only got one solar panel out, and that's basically because I find it interesting. <laughs> okay, we are approaching our target now, and it looks like we're connected through our satellites around the moon. So, uh, well, on the bright side, um, that should hold out for quite a while. Okay, well, I better just stop it here. Kill rotation. Uh, well, all right, just SAS, maybe. All right, we need to bring a tug out to meet up with this. And we'll leave that solar panel out for now. And we're not even in render range of the Mars ship yet. But I'll have to do. Okay. Undock. At this point we can retract this. Well, I'll wait till it figures out where it's supposed to be. Okay. Uh, that doesn't look like the right roll at all. So we got the cone on this side. Um, I think this is right, judging from that one. Tight fit again. And... Good, good. All right. You, you, hmm. Doesn't say undock from this one. Well, shouldn't it? Oh, it's the wrong way around. Oh, gosh darn it. It should still say, be able to say undock. What the heck? Is it, I think it's, is it the wrong way around? No, it's the right way around. Hmm. Can that one say undock? Huh. I I see a little flaw in the plan. Well, port enable staging. I guess so. Uh, this might not be the best thing ever, but... Uh, staging didn't work. Let's... Nope, definitely didn't work. Hmm... Well, this hasn't gone according to plan. I thought I would just be able to undock from that thing, like the other port did. But apparently I've missed something. Well, I think I'm going to leave it here for now and figure out what I've missed. Well, let's, since it's worked well for us today. Um, hmm, there's some mech jab thing going on. Well, maybe that's because it's pointing at target or something. Uh, input locks. Clear input locks. I don't think that changes anything. Nope. Plenty of undocking on this side. Not so much on that side. That, uh, I was thinking of decoupling this, but that strikes me as a bad idea at the moment. It's not impossible. Well, I mean, this thing is doomed anyway. Well, let me try and go away and come back to it and then see what I can do. Okay, no luck in just going away and coming back. I'll... I'll decouple this. 
that doesn't help anything. I think that I just need to send these up again. Yeah, I'm gonna just need to send these up again with decouplers there. I don't see any other way of doing this. So that's weird, but I'll take it. Let's see, can we deorbit de this now? Finally. This now works. And then I'll use the tug to deorbit those and send the tug back over to the station. Okay, you're overdoing it. All right, all right. I don't want to get too far away from this. Okay, so we're uh, controlling from this. I guess. Problem is if we like try to attach this end to the station, it'll be the wrong way around. So I don't really want to, well, I mean the solar panels are sort of in the, well, then it still can't decouple from this end. So it doesn't matter. I don't really understand why that doesn't work, but I sort of feel like I should go into the configuration and see what's up, but it'll be simpler just to do it over. We've had enough issues this time. I'll just take care of it. A uh, nice clean episode next time. I wonder why it doesn't show the liquid methane over here. Ooh, yeah, it is unbalanced, that's true. Whoops. Okay, you know what? I've had enough. <laughs> I'll just get rid of this from the tracking station view. Time is precious. Ooh, everything broke off. It's a huge, dangerous debris field now. I don't really want to dock there, but it's not a problem to dock there. Not actually a problem to just go ahead and park this on that end. Okay, and we're docked. All right. So, well, trusses two and three were a bust. We'll have to try that again next time and hopefully move on to other things. That will just be one launch and we will try and get some other stuff done but for now i think um, this is looking ever more magnificent so i'm reasonably satisfied at least i solved the problem of the day and uh, with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time